In this next video of our advanced refrigeration course, which is lesson two, we're going to be talking about commercial defrost timers. Okay, at least we're going to give the introduction of these. Now, commercial defrost timers use a much more complex time clock than the domestic refrigeration timers do to control the defrost circuit. It has to have more availability to do more things. Commercial defrost timers have a couple advantages over the domestic type. First, the timer is connected directly across the power line. This separates the timer from the operation of the compressor. And second, the defrost cycle can be started during periods when the unit is in minimum use. In other words, we have the adjustability and the flexibility with commercial defrost timers to make sure we pick times of the day where it's not going to impact customer service or food quality. Commercial defrost timers generally have two time settings. The first setting determines the time of the day or night the timer turns on. Okay, it's usually a slidable pin, pin or just adjustable setting. The second setting determines on how long the defrost remains running. This is the Paragon timer, and there's a ton of them out here that look somewhat similar. The outer knob has pins in it. Okay, that you put in there, and when the pin is in the hole, that's where the defrost initiates. So like in this case, the defrost is set up to initiate at 8 um, a.m. Okay, because it's a 24-hour clock. The inner knob, okay, has a movable little tab on it. And in this case, if you look real close, the tab is on 40 minutes. So by default, this defrost timer will start defrost at 8 a.m. and run for 40 minutes. Now, in most cases, you need to do defrost more often than once a day. This is just a demonstration setting. So again, the outer wheel is the time or times of day defrost starts. The inner wheel is how long it will run. There's a digital version of this as well, okay, that has a digital clock face and buttons that you can actually set on when you set these, it actually grays out in 10 minute increments how long the defrost will by default run. Both of these timers, you can actually set, you can actually push into defrost manually. This one, you do it by turning the knob until you get around to the correct time. This one, the digital version, there's a little button up here on the left hand side that shows you that says manual defrost. Now, to find out if these systems are in defrost, the digital one is easy. It will actually go to a red dot that says defrost and a green dot that says normal operation. This one, you can actually use a voltmeter across the spots, across the terminals down here at the bottom, and it will show you if it's in defrost or not. The wiring for this, I think it goes into it later in, the power, in this PowerPoint, but the wiring is easy. Line voltage across one, connected to 1, and N, line and neutral. 3, 4, 3 and 4 are my normally cl closed and normally open, and X is my defrost termination. We'll talk more about that. Now, the commercial timer, the center knob sets how long the contacts are energized before they return to their normal position. The contact can be set to remain in there energized for position for a minimum of two minutes to a maximum of 120 minutes. I doubt very seriously you want to do 120 minute defrost. It would be too much heat in that cooler. The timer has a separate timer release solenoid incorporated into its design. When the timer release solenoid is energized, it causes the contacts to return to their normal de-energized position immediately. This permits the action of some type of external limit switch, such as temperature or pressure switch, to terminate the defrost cycle. The defrost in refrigeration is divided into two different ranges, medium temperature ranges and low temperature ranges. There are different components used in the defrost cycles for these temperature ranges. There are also two methods of defrost, off-cycle or random, or time and planned. Off-cycle defrost is generally used with medium temperature refrigeration. In other words, my box temperature is over 32 degrees. There's no additional electrical device needed to defrost the coil. Medium temperature coil normally operates below freezing and rises above freezing during the off cycle. Again, we're talking about 
we need to look at the box temperature. What's the space at surrounding the coil? I could have a 20 degree coil when it's operational, but if my freezer or my cooler is above 32 degrees, when that coil shuts off, in other words, the space has reached the desired temperature above 32 degrees, all the ice is going to melt off the coil. Okay, so my coil normally operates below freezing and rises above freezing during the off cycle. And remember, in commercial refrigeration, my evaporator fans run continuously, except when they're in defrost. The time between the unit shut off until it turns on is the defrost period. So this is an example of an off cycle defrost. We have my compressor motor and my condenser fit, or my condenser motor and my compressor motor up here. Okay, my evaporator fan runs continuously. So my thermostat or pressure switch, when it opens, it shuts off the compressor and the condenser fan, but my evaporator fan continues to run and pushes that warmer air across the coil, which defrosts it. Time defrost uses a commercial defrost time clock. It sends the system into an enforced defrost period. Time defrost can be used with a couple different methods of defrost. No supplemental heat, which means my box temperature is above 32 degrees. We can also use electric heat or hot gas. Each one of these has a different method of wiring, and we're going to talk much more about these as we move forward through this course. The time defrost with no supplemental heat, the time clock turns on and off the compressor. The compressor stays off for a longer period of time, usually 45 to 60 minutes. The time clock is a 24-hour clock type device with just a normally open and a normally closed contact. The timer motor, as with most commercial defrost, runs continuously. This is an example of a time defrost with no supplemental heat. So we have our normally closed contacts. This is in the defrost timer, okay, that shuts off the circuit to my compressor and my condenser fan. The timer motor and the evaporator fan motor run continuously. Now we move on in our defrost to a low temperature operation. What we mean by low temperature application is that my box temperature, that's the space that we're cooling, is below 32 degrees. In other words, ice will not melt on its own off the coil if it's not running. Okay, time clock turns off the compressor and turns on the electrical defrost heaters on the evaporator. The evaporator fan motor shuts off during defrost with a delay in starting after the defrost cycle. Straight time can end the defrost cycle or can be terminated by sensing the coil temperature as it warms up. A pump down cycle can also be used to remove the refrigerant from the evaporator de during defrost. The reason we may want to do that is re liquid refrigerant will always go to the coldest location. So if I don't remove the refrigerant from the evaporator and block it from entering the evaporator, my evaporator could be full of liquid refrigerant when the compressor comes back on and it would suck all that liquid refrigerant up through the suction line and pour liquid refrigerant into the compressor. Remember, compressors are not liquid pumps, they're vapor pumps. So we have our timer motor. We have a normally open set of contacts that's connected to our electric heater. Normally closed, which is normal operation, goes to our evaporator fan motor, fan delay, and our compressor and condenser fan motor. So when the system goes into defrost, okay, the normally closed contacts open, shuts everything off on the cooling circuit, including my evaporator fan motor. We shut, we close the normally open contacts, turn on the electric heater. Our timer motor, which controls the whole operation of the sequence, continues to run. We also then have time defrost using hot gas. It's all again low temperature application. The time clock energizes the hot gas solenoid valve. And as with most of our defrost, except for off cycle, we keep the evaporator fans shut down during defrost with a delay in starting after the defrost cycle. In other words, we want to cool that coil before we start the evaporator fan. I do not want to blow hot, moist air around the space we're trying to freeze. 
the compressor stays running during defrost. The hot gas from the discharge line of the compressor is routed into the evaporator. Now, straight time can end the defrost cycle or can be terminated by sensing the coil temperature as it warms up. Remember, once my coil is over 40 degrees, there's no ice on it anymore. So we can actually put a thermostat onto that coil and say, okay, terminate defrost once it's defrosted. It's less expensive to use than electric defrost. I don't have high amperage heaters to use. I use the heat from the refrigeration cycle. However, we have more wear and tear on the compressor as it turns on in both the refrigeration and the defrost modes. This is an example of the hot gas cycle. It's pretty similar to the electric cycle, except for the fact we leave our compressor and our condenser fan motor running drain the defrost cycle. All we do is shut off the evaporator fan and we enable a hot gas solenoid that bypasses the discharge gas from the compressor directly to the evaporator. And again, we're going to talk much more about this as this course goes on. So that is our conversation about introduction to electric to commercial defrost clocks. Basically, we have three types of commercial defrost. We have off cycle, and we have electric and we have hot gas. Off cycle is the only one in which you'll leave the evaporator fans running. Anything with electric or hot gas, we have to shut the evaporator fans down. Off cycle defrost is only used in medium temperature refrigeration. In other words, the box temperature or the space being cooled is above freezing. Once it drops below freezing, you have to go to electric or hot gas defrost.